What's going on guys, Wes back with another review. If you haven't seen my video that I released a few videos ago, I talk about why I recently ditched my Apple Watch for the Whoop strap. After this video, go check that one out because I'm gonna be doing a series and releasing about once a month going to different aspects of why I've been enjoying and loving the Whoop strap so much. I've been an avid fitness nut and tech nerd my entire life. I've used the Jawbone, the Fitbit, I mean, even when I was a kid, I had a pedometer. It was actually one of those Pika Pets, but you wanted to hit 10,000 steps a day. And then after a long hiatus, I eventually pulled the trigger on the Apple Watch Series 4 because it came out with the ECG. But as my focus and my overall fitness change as I get older, I'm looking more into my fitness tolerance and my recovery. And the Apple Watch just has a lot of shortcomings. For the longest time, it was sleep tracking, which I understand with the Series 6 and the release of Watch OS 7, they have come up with that, but the whole battery issue is just not something that I'm gonna deal with day to day. So, enter Whoopstrap. After months and months of deliberating whether or not I should get one, I finally pulled the trigger, and I gotta tell you, I love the physiological data representation that Whoop gives you. We're talking recovery score, strain, heart rate, and a vast number of things. One of the things that surprised me the most is the auto detection of your state. And it has been right on the money with detecting my workouts. Now on this channel, I'm still gonna be continuing to review a wide variety of products for health, wellness, and adventure. I mean, all the things that I'm most interested in. But again, once a month, I'm gonna be releasing Whoop videos. So if any of what I said interests you, I'd appreciate if you smash that subscribe button and let's get into sleep. I suck at sleep, I always have. I used to brag about only needing five to six hours a night and that is wrong. I'm a complete idiot. Like I think back of when I played college ball in undergrad, in law school, working at a law firm and just how much better I could have performed with adequate sleep. And if you're someone who thinks that you don't need that much sleep, I'm gonna tell you, you're wrong too. On average, we need eight hours, and there's a statistically insignificant portion of the population that has this gene that require less than eight hours. So what are we doing when we sleep? Well, our body needs to recover from all the damage we did to it of the previous day, to our muscles, our tissue, our cells. It needs to lower cortisol levels so we have a fresh start. And then our brain needs to sort through all of the memories and knowledge that we learned throughout the day. Like anything I watch on E! or any celebrity news that somehow sneaks into my Instagram feed and gets in this brain. I want it gone. And then throughout the night, our body's going through these 90 to 110 minute cycles, altering from different states. In the first four hours of the night, we should be experiencing mostly deep sleep, and in the last four hours, mostly REM sleep. So when you are sacrificing any of the time throughout the day on the front half or the back half, you're gonna be sacrificing your body or your brain recovering to its full potential. All right, so now that we want some sleep, let's talk about sleep tracking. Now clinically, if you're gonna do a sleep study, they're gonna do something called polysomnography. It's gonna use a variety of highly sophisticated equipment to measure your brain waves, heart rate, your bodily movements, and if you wanna measure the brain waves, we're talking these very invasive and uncomfortable sensors that are gonna be stuck to your head with wires. It's gonna give you an accurate reading, and if you wanna do it every night, you by all means go ahead but I'd rather wear something on my damn wrist, which is exactly what the Whoop Strap does. So how about the accuracy of the Whoop Strap? Now, I can't speak about other sleep trackers because quite frankly, I did not research them. I'm focused solely on the Whoop Strap and its holistic approach to all the data that it wants to give me, including my sleep performance. So is it accurate? Well, according to one study by the University of Arizona, yes. They did a study about the effects of sleep trackers on people in improving healthy sleep habits. And the tracker they used was the Whoopstrap 3.0. They compared the data of the polysomnography to the Whoopstrap and found that the data was highly agreeable with the duration of sleep and the different sleep stages of sleep, which is excellent news when you're relying on it to improve your sleep. So now that we know that we're talking about some solid data that we can rely upon, let's talk about the different readings that you're gonna get from the Whoop Strap. So when we wake up, we're getting our sleep performance and our sleep score and everything, but we're first presented with some journal entries. And it's customizable to you, 
and the importance of answering these is to help promote healthy sleep habits. I know some people who have the whoop strap that ignore these because it can be kind of a nuisance in the morning, but I mean, I'm talking like maybe 30, 60 seconds at most to help promote your healthy sleep habits. Why are these important? Well, one thing I learned from why we sleep is that there's nothing you can take to help promote natural sleep. And by nothing, I mean no clinical study has verified the use of different supplements like melatonin. And definitely not things like Ambien, which has been proven to be actually a memory eraser. It'll put you to sleep, but the natural sleep quality will not be there. So the only thing that has been proven is healthy sleep training and healthy sleep habits. That can be aided by the journal entry. You'll get a monthly assessment after 28 days of using the whoop strap, and from there you can see how the different things you do throughout the day can affect your sleep. Like me, for example, I've decided that I'm not gonna eat so close to bedtime. I'm talking about three to four hours. I'm not gonna work out close to bedtime because one of the things that happens when you sleep is it lowers your core body temperature. When you work out, it raises your core body temperature. I limit my screen time. I wear a sleep mask, and hey, surprise, surprise, Alcohol does not help me sleep. But one thing that I'm sure it's not the intentional whoop that I've done was day drink versus too close to bedtime because it gives me time to hydrate. I also noticed that I did have a good recovery score when I day drank for college football. And although I had a good recovery score, I woke up kind of tired because my respiratory rate went up. So I use a breathe right strip. That way I can get some better breathing at night. Again, I'm sorry, I know that's not the intent of the whoop strap in my overall health, but some days you wanna indulge in a couple adult pops and you wanna do anything to limit your hangover. You can see the duration sleep and the different phases of sleep and see the expectations and maybe some sort of odd anomalies that you didn't expect. For example, when I look at my data, I notice that my time in REM sleep is much higher than on average compared to the published data that whoop shows on their website. I did a little research and although it's not necessarily verified, it is theorized that people on higher carb diets will spend more time in REM sleep. I'm on a higher carb diet. And also during sleep is when the WHOOP's gonna measure things like your HRV and establish your recovery score. These two are very important aspects of the WHOOP strap that I'll go into in later videos, but here we're solely focused on sleep. So lastly, we're gonna talk about the thing that I love the most, which is the sleep coach and the sleep debt tracker. Now, what is sleep debt? If you're someone like me that doesn't always get the eight hours, your body just doesn't dismiss that, it still needs that. So Whoop does a fantastic job of adding it to the sleep need of the next day. And paying attention to that will keep you from accumulating a large amount of sleep debt that will take you weeks to make up for because your body will do its best to try and make up that sleep debt. It's just something that we naturally do. And again, I wasn't aware of until I read Why We Sleep. There's also the sleep coach. And the sleep coach will show you, okay, do I wanna get by? Do I wanna perform or do I wanna peak? And then you can alter the time that you wanna get up and it'll show you what time you need to go to bed. I used this last night. It was game four of the NBA Finals, Heat Lakers, I'm down in South Florida, so go Heat and I didn't watch the second half because I need to get to bed so I can wake up on time for work. It's something that I'm playing with. As much as I love sports, I love my health even more. All right, so there it is, whoop and sleep. This nerd brain has really enjoyed getting in depth into my health as it relates how I can use the whoop data. And I'm gonna continue to be posting updates here and on Instagram, so follow me there if you haven't already. And also, if you enjoyed this video, Hit the subscribe button, smash the like button, and go get some sleep. Peace.